So um, I'll show you something here real quick. We um, we don't we only we're driving in half subwoofers here, so the low end won't sound so big, but. Let me know if it's too loud and I'll pull it down for you. One of the largest drummers, one of the largest drum kits in the world. Three mics, no processing except compression. Of course, Pacifica's pad switch in. KSM 32 is overhead. The only difference is the kick drum is a um, D112. Uh, he actually had it mounted inside uh, the kick drum. We did use more, but I just pulled these three, and I could pull this example because this is one where it plays only a single kick drum. But again, yeah, I wanted to show you a real extreme from this very straight. You know, Southern Cal California pop rock thing without a lot of toms to one of the biggest drum sets in the world with this ultra simple technique, and that gets us up and rocking. So, uh, let's go back to uh, Victor Bassetti. Actually, I'm going to do something real quick. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, reboot this. I'm going to ignore you, but listen. Okay, me too. Uh, uh, the ac actual overhead placement on a set, what were we talking? Yes. Um, I'll tell you in just a second. I generally start with a spaced pair of overheads. Um, the reason I do that is highly scientific. Um, when I was first learning to record, I saw a picture of a recording session from Van Halen 2, and that's where the overheads were, so I thought, well, that's how you do it. Yeah. And it's been pretty amazing how well that has served me ever since. <laughs> Um, the space pair, the, one of the nice things about the space pair is that it allows you to move them around and mix the drums with placement. So if a crash cymbal is overbearing, you can move away from it. If you're not getting enough of the hi-hat, move towards it or away from it. So I'll move that around until I get a good mix on the drum set. Downside is 100% guaranteed to have some mono compatibility problems. Sometimes it's just a hit that you take. And if that doesn't make sense, it means if this gets listened back to in mono or if you choose to pull the drums together, overheads together, we're going to start introducing some kind of phase problems. Um, another totally valid option is to actually use an XY pair over the drums. It's valid. It's much better mono compatibility, near perfect, at least for that, that set. It just doesn't sound as fun. It's very natural sounding, but you don't get any of that sense of, yeah! <laughs> it just sounds a lot more realistic, like a real, real drum set. Uh, in the back, some... Oh, I'm sorry, just be naive. Um, could you just explain what a space pair is? Oh, yes, meaning the fancy way to say that is the capsules are not coincident. But basically it means that the microphones aren't together. So a stereo pair made from like left and right that are out versus a coincident pair like XY where the two mics are together, and sound is hitting both of those mics at more or less the same time. Can you, can you, sorry, can you just expound on that, exactly where are you placing them in relation to the set? Um, I'm going to move them around until I get a good mix. So it's going to be different with every drummer. 
but more or less kind of over the drummer usually again that we could spend uh, two days just on this but moving around until we get that mix and the amount the height of that is going to be, be dependent on how much room ambience we want and how much direct sound <coughs> the challenge though is when you start to bring the mics lower which can be a great sound the microphones will start to highlight certain parts of the kit more than others so you'll get a little bit less of the natural balance of the drummer i'll be with you in just a second yes so the further they are, you get less mono compatibility, but it's no, more, it, com more mono, the, less phase No, issues. the fact that they are not together, you have you are 100% guaranteed to have mono compatibility problems. So whether they're here or here, you just have different problems. It's all screwed up. Anytime you record a sound with more than one microphone and the microphones are not together, you are 100% guaranteed to have phase and mono compatibility problems. There is no alternate answer to that. And, uh, yes. Um, directionality. You've not talked about pickup patterns at all. Or is it assumed? That my preference is cardioids. Okay. Um, and uh, there's a lot of good options, but my preference tends to be in those KSM32s are medium diaphragm condensers, cardioids. But also, I love Neumann U87s and uh, things like that. I tend to prefer cardioids because I really like the focus sound of a, a cardioid. Yes or no? Just uh, curious. Um, you know, all the method, and you know, you use like four or five. Uh, Microphones. Yes. I'm just curious, what what would be your take about uh, Phil Collins's uh, albums when they use, you know, <laughs> a lot of mics? Yeah, the eighties were about excess, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you know, and I guarantee Hugh Padgham could easily do a great get it, get you a great drum sound with one microphone. <laughs> so I mean, eighties were part of excess, and there are there are producers and engineers who used forty mics on a drum. Set, and I love those records and can't stop listening to them. The thing to keep in mind is that when, when you add more and more microphones, you add more and more problems. The more microphones you add, it opens up some ability to you know, adjust balances and things like that. Um, but every mic you add, for everything it adds, it creates new problems with all of the other microphones. And records with a lot of phase problems will sound smaller and lack punch and clarity.